Hey everyone, this is a quick update to the video that I just published on this ceramic spray coating. I realized there were some details that I wasn't very clear about, so I want to clarify those real quick, answer a couple obvious questions that I just forgot to tell you about, and then perform a few extra experiments because there are some good comments after the video was published about things I could have tried or maybe didn't do quite correctly. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch it first because otherwise none of this will make sense. So by far the biggest question was, did you shake this or is it a new bottle or did you prime it first? And I dropped the ball, I should have told you more details about this. This is not a new bottle. I've been using this around my house and around the shop for a while now so you know plenty of it's been used it's been primed I sprayed it some before the video I was just going through the motions of reading the label and shaking it on video so you could see how it's supposed to be used but this is definitely not a new bottle so it should be pretty well primed and not settled to the bottom Question number two was, you know, did this work? I bought it for my CNC machine I told you about that at the beginning and then I never told you if it's you know, useful. Uh, it's okay. It does basically as good as the Rain-X style sprays. You know, it's hydrophobic and it beads up pretty well, but the coolant eats it away pretty quickly. So I'd say it is no better than your standard just hydrophobic spray. So relatedly, after these sprays didn't work, I added some screen protectors to my CNC machines. Man, I am in love with these tablet screen protectors on the inside of your machine. It's one of those oleophobic tempered glass kind of tablet iPad style protector. And they're just amazing. Yeah, you can see the difference between the bottom and the top. It's not perfect, but you can at least see what's going on as opposed to just getting kind of a smeary flood. They're great. Totally worth the 20 bucks. I've had them on my machines for quite a while. One machine almost a year now and another machine a couple months and the coating seems to last a really long time and it beads up really well and gives you pretty good visibility into the machine. So I would recommend that for anyone that's in a similar situation. Try those out and skip the sprays. The last comment or clarification brought up by a few people in the comments which I wholeheartedly agree with is that glass is not a ceramic. <laughs> like a ceramic is a crystalline structure, whereas amorphous silica is by definition a glass, an amorphous non-crystalline material. So calling this a ceramic spray coating is just false. Like it's not ceramic and you know, shame on you marketing department, but I am assuming they're not talking to material scientists. So we'll let that slide, but ceramic is not a glass. The glass is not a ceramic. So that brings us to some potential issues that some viewers brought up while watching the video. And I think this really shows where my brain was as opposed to other people. So I was looking at this stuff from a material science perspective and I said, oh, it's got amorphous silica in it. I bet it's a nanoparticle. I'd really like to see those nanoparticles. And so if you're working in nanoparticles, because they're so small, it's really hard to image them. So you, what you want ideally is a substrate like a glass slide or a silicon wafer or a piece of mica, something that's very smooth, flat, and consistent because the nanoparticles are just so small, it's hard to pick them out on anything that has any kind of surface texture. So my brain immediately went to a glass slide. It's kind of perfect for this, it's cheap, it's easy. Now, what a lot of viewers pointed out is that this is a very bad proxy for a car environment, right? Your car is coated in paint, which is relatively soft. Uh, it's been out in the elements, so it's weathered and scratched up and has a lot of abrasion, and it's not hard like a pristine piece of glass. And this stuff is, you know, designed to go on top of your paint and your external windshield. So one of the leading theories in the comments is that it's just not sticking to something hard and smooth like this and it just gets basically wiped right off. Which I think is a really excellent point and something that I just didn't consider at all because I was so hyper focused on the nanoparticles. So we're going to take a glass slide and scuff it up with some high grit sandpaper, something like 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper to kind of simulate the swirl marks that you would get on a real life piece of glass. So for the glass, we have to be a little careful here. So after scuffing it up, we're going to clean it in the ultrasonic very carefully because we need to get all the abrasive grit and scratched up glass particles out of the system so that we don't have any kind of false positives. Give that a quick sputter coat, thin 10 nanometers of silver, pop it under the SEM and take some kind of characteristic photos of what it looks like 
after it's been scratched, but before the coating. And we need to do this to just make sure that any of the abrasion process that we've done is kind of accounted for and we're not mistaking just the sanding for the nanoparticle ceramic spray. Then we'll give it a coating of the spray. I tried not to wipe it too excessively, just in case, and we'll throw it back under the SEM. And I have to say, it's a lot more interesting than the previous video where we're using a clean, blank piece of glass. There's still not a lot of particles, but if we look at the individual cracks and compare the before and after images, we can see a fair amount of stuff kind of filling those cracks up. It's not filled to the brim by any means, but there are some particles and aggregates tucked away in most of these scratches. Zooming in, we can see that the particles are, again, on the order of 50 to 200, 300 nanometers. There are some larger particles that are on the order of a couple microns, just depending on where you look. Given that this is SEM and we're just looking at stuff visually, we can't quite confirm that these are the silica particles. It could be blobs of that carnauba wax or the PDMS silicones kind of in little particles, but it's likely this amorphous silica just given the size and the shape. Scanning around this test sample, we can see more or less the same thing. All these scratches seem to have some amount of particles in it. We can find some particles sitting on the top surface, but it's uh, generally reserved for the, the scratches. So I think this is an interesting result and conflicts with the results from the first video. So the viewers that mentioned the substrate being a poor choice, you know, kudos to you. I think that was a really good point about my particular set of experiments. I'm still not overly convinced by, you know, the usefulness of these particles. They aren't really filling the cracks aggressively. You know, they're not packed to the brim and there's still a relatively sparse amount of particles, but there are clearly a lot more than there were before. We're also going to try coating some slides in paint just to see what happens. I know this is acrylic and you don't use acrylics on cars, but I don't feel like getting an enamel paint. And besides, I don't think it's gonna work because there's too much texture, but we'll take a look and see. The paint samples are unfortunately totally unusable like I expected. Uh, this is why I didn't do something like this to start because you just can't see anything with nanoparticles on a surface that has texture. So the the paint is way, way too textured. I tried spin coating it to get a thinner surface and the spin coating, well, it didn't really work very well anyway. And the surface is equally rough and textured. So unfortunately this is a bust. We can't really see anything because there's just so much texture here. Trying to find nanoparticles in this topology is basically a fool's errand. I'm also going to polish up an SEM stub. These go directly in the machine and image the coating directly on top of this aluminum. The point for this experiment is that when we use the glass slide, we're putting silica on top of silica. So we can't use the EDS detector to try to find the silica particles because it everything's glass here. So it all shows up the same. But if we use a metal stub, the silica nanoparticles will show up differently to the aluminum background under the EDS detector. So hopefully we can find some particles and really confirm that it's silica and not just globs of wax. EDS is a way to quantify the elements in you know, the sample that you're looking at. So we can turn it on and crank up the power of the machine and it will start telling us what elements are at each pixel that we look at. If we run this, we can find, for example, in this field of view, it's mostly aluminum, which is no great surprise, but we do find a few little spots of silicon kind of hiding in nooks and crannies. And if we zoom in on those spots, we find one lone silica particle that's kind of hanging out in this little crack or crevasse. So this is kind of a neat result. It helps confirm that we're actually seeing silica in this spray and it's not just globs of wax. Uh, it's a little troubling how little silica we actually see. There's basically no silicon dioxide in the field of view except for a few particles. The pin stub is polished pretty flat, but it's also relatively softer than glass. So I would have expected some of the particles to maybe embed into the aluminum or at least get caught by these small scratches, which were not seen. So again, this is an interesting result kind of both for and against the particles in this spray. And then finally, we're gonna be looking at this piece of anodized aluminum. The top surface that's black has been anodized and filled in with a dye. So it should have a pretty coarse 
although microscopic texture to it, which I'm hoping will catch a lot of the particles and we'll see something interesting. Unfortunately, the anodized aluminum was similar to the paint in that it was just too rough to really see anything of note. The coated and uncoated side both look pretty similar in terms of particles and just junk sitting around on the surface. So I think that one's kind of a bust. Can't really conclude anything from that. Right, so that wraps up this additional kind of addendum testing video. Uh, I hope that was interesting. The extra context from the scratched up slide I think is interesting and maybe points to some of the details about how this stuff works. It seems like it needs a softer or more weathered surface to start to deposit some of the particles. Uh, that opens up a whole different set of questions personally, like, you know, how useful is it if it only fills up the low spots but not the high spots? You know, it's not really protecting the top surface, it's just packing the low surfaces. If it's so susceptible to being wiped off by a microfiber, what's going to keep you know, the elements from wiping it away. So there opens up a lot of additional questions, but I think it is interesting that we saw a different morphology under something that was like scratched up as opposed to pristine. I would like to note that this is in no way a product review. Like it's a fine spray for a hydrophobic spray. I have nothing against it. I'm not trying to quantify how good of a spray it is in terms of shedding water. I was really interested in the nanoparticles in particular. So for all the folks that are linking different reviews of different sprays about how well they work or don't work, those are probably still entirely accurate. You can have a good hydrophobic spray and include nanoparticle ceramic as a marketing gimmick but still have a good spray. Now, I still personally think that the amorphous silica being added to this is more or less a marketing gimmick, similar to how graphene gets added to stuff and it's claimed to be revolutionary and change things. And, you know, nanotechnology stuff is kind of a hot buzzword that you can throw into products and get to make wild claims that are maybe not supported by any actual evidence. So yes, it has amorphous silica in it, Yes, it seems to accumulate. Does it actually do anything? Uh, I don't know, probably not. At least that's my personal opinion. Feel free to look at the images and make your own conclusion as to whether you think those little particles are really doing anything. That's up to you. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick follow-up video to the previous video. I just wanted to try some of these and make sure I wasn't totally missing the mark on the first video, and I'm still pretty happy with where both of them came out. So that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.